Hey y'all, Fozzie here. Talking to you about the 10 deadliest or most dangerous scenic motorcycle rides in the state of Washington. There's 10 of them on the list and it was my intent to uh, film all 10 of them this year, but I didn't quite make it. I got seven and a half. Now we're coming to you mid-October and uh, the weather's just too unstable for some of these trips now. I don't want to be filming stuff in the rain or fog or smoke or whatever. So uh, we'll have to put three of them off until next year. But these uh, are all done by statistics compiled by the Washington State Patrol and then put together by a group of ambulance chasers who've studied these roads over a period of four or five years. And I believe the way the scoring works is it's like five points for a fatality, three points for reported uh, injury collision, and uh, one point for a non-injury collision. And at the end of the period, they add all these statistics up and compile uh, what are the 10 most deadly scenic routes in uh, Washington State. That being said, uh, let's uh, dig a little deeper into the subject here. Coming in at number 10, the Spirit Lake Highway, or uh, Mount St. Helens Highway, however you'd like to look at it. Goes basically from Castle Rock to the Johnson Ridge Observatory. It's about 51 miles. A gorgeous ride. Um, haven't filmed the ride yet, but we did scout it in a Jeep earlier this year, probably back in May, I'd say. So I consider that cheating, but I'll put up a link to it just so you can see it. But it's definitely a ride I'm planning on doing in the upcoming year. So coming in at number nine on our list is a ride we're gonna call Out to the Ocean. This one basically goes down Highway 101 from Ocean Shores, Washington to Seaside, Oregon. Overall, I'd say this is a pretty safe ride, even for a novice. Um, there's some twists and turns and a couple tunnels and the bridge across the Columbia River there at Astoria is like forever long. But overall, if you take your time and pay attention, it should be a pretty easy ride. I uh, definitely would say the biggest danger here is the amount of traffic on certain holiday weekends. There can be a lot of people out there in their RVs and such. And people get distracted looking at the scenery and not paying attention. Those are probably the biggest challenges, but overall this is a pretty good ride. Coming in at number eight is uh, Rattlesnake Pass to Wallowa Lake. This starts out in Joseph, Oregon and runs along Highway 129. It's about 98 miles long and uh, ends up in Clarkston, Washington. Haven't made this ride yet, so you'll have to tune in next year and hopefully you'll have some better information on this one. Coming in at number seven is uh, Chuckanut Drive. This is probably the shortest ride on the list. I think this thing's only like 25 miles long. It basically goes uh, from like the Bow area up to Fairhaven, Bellingham, uh, Highway 11, I think it is. Lots of twists and turns, lots of great views of the ocean, really heavily traveled during the summer. I think that's the greatest danger is the amount of looky-loos, people riding bikes, tourists with cameras, things like that. So there's some great corners, but you're not going to get a chance to burn through any of these because there's going to be lots of people in the way. Uh, it's a fun ride if you're if it's on the way coming here or there uh, Definitely one to check out but not something I would plan a big trip around because it's just so short Coming in at number six is the sunset run. This is a pretty fun ride. It's another real short one It basically starts out at dash point in federal way Runs along the water all the way down through Tacoma and out to Point Defiance Another very heavily traveled run. This is a good one for a quick getaway if you're in the area of Tacoma or Federal Way. It's a short little ride. A lot of good places to stop and eat along the way. It's, it's a lot of fun. It's comparable to riding around like Alki or some other places. A lot of beachfront. Uh, definitely not something I'd plan my camping trip around, but uh, it's worth checking out. Coming in at number five is the Mount Baker Highway, Highway 542. This one's probably my favorite out of all these 10. Um, this is right outside of Bellingham. You take uh, Highway 542 off of Highway 9 and you go all the way up to the ski area. 
lots of twists and turns, lots of switchbacks, uh, steep drop-offs, bridges, rivers. It's pretty much got a little bit of everything in it. This one's uh, probably one of the more technical rides on the list. It's one if I was a new rider or a novice, I'd probably want to be very careful of. Uh, some of the turns are overtly pitched and it's pretty easy to scrape if you get going too fast or not paying attention. It's definitely one I'd leave to the more experienced riders, but boy is it a blast. Coming in at number four, the click -a tat loop. This is another one I didn't make yet, but uh, plans are in the works. It'll be next year sometime. This is down by Hood River, Oregon, but it's on the Washington side. It's a pretty long loop, uh, a little over 100 miles. It starts out in Bingen and ends up in Lyle and then back. So it makes a big circle. Uh, we'll be sure and post this as soon as we get it filmed sometime next year. Coming in at number three is the Leavenworth Run. This basically is Highway 2 over Stevens Pass down into the town of Leavenworth. Um, a lot of traffic on this road during the summer, so you need to be very careful. Uh, towards the end, before you get into Leavenworth, there's tons and twists and turns where it runs alongside the river down there, but it's incredibly beautiful. The Bavarian themed town of Leavenworth is a lot of fun. Definitely a great place for a weekend getaway with your sweetie if that's what you're looking for. Highly recommended. Just be careful. Coming in at number two, it's Highway 410 or Chinook Pass. Basically, you're taking Highway 410 from Enumclaw and follow it all the way into Natchez. You're going right over Chinook Pass. Incredible views of Mount Rainier. You drive through the Mount Rainier Park. Uh, you get a chance to stop at Whistling Jacks if you can. It's a lot of fun. There's a few places where it's a little twisty and turny and a few places where the roads are a little lumpy. I mean, this road's closed half the year. So definitely check ahead to make sure that the pass is open and uh, have a blast on it. Last but not least, coming in at number one, we got it, you guessed it, Highway 20 or the North Cascades Highway from Marble Mount to Winthrop. It's a lovely ride, man. Uh, lakes, rivers, dams, high mountain passes, some of the most beautiful green colored lakes you've ever seen at uh, Diablo and Ross Lake. And it ends up in Winthrop, a lovely Western themed town in uh, Eastern Washington. So it's a, definitely a great place for a weekend getaway. Take your sweetheart to a uh, fantastic ride. I highly recommend it. Definitely take a trip, side trip to the lookout there at American Pass or whatever they call it, right as you're um, going down the other side. It's very well worth the view. So um, be careful. This one's had quite a few fatalities on it, including one the week before I was out there filming. But uh, take your time, get through the corners, watch out for crazy people in their cages, and you should be just fine. All right, man. Well, hey, thanks for checking it out. I look forward to filming the other uh, three remaining rides sometime next year. So if you get a chance, subscribe to the channel, please. Thanks. Have a great one. See you in the wind.